Most of us think of sobriety checkpoints on the road where it's easy to stop cars, easy to get people out to walk the line and conduct other sobriety tests. As you can imagine, it looks a little different out on the water. These bear resistant cans only work if the latch is closed. Now, if they're not closed, if they catch you in violation, they won't be giving warnings and it could cost you a couple hundred bucks. The best way to describe the mood down here is simply joy. People walking out of the bars and restaurants, wherever they were watching, arms in the air for the most part, just cheering, giving high fives as they cross 16th Street. It was quite a wild ride for a lot of people out here, right along the Morgan County, Weld County line. I'm going to show you what it looks like out front from our weather beast here. And this is our dash cam. We're in a campground right on the edge of Empire Reservoir here, just west of Wiggins. And just look at this damage. It's pretty incredible. The remarkable thing is that there were only a couple of people actually at this campground today when this tornado struck. They were in campers that, believe it or not, were not tossed around. We're driving up here now um, to see if we can give you a picture of one that was thrown right into the water. That's what remains of one of those campers. About 70% of the in and outbound flights being canceled. And I'm going to give you an idea why. We're just off of Pena Boulevard here. And uh, we get out into the wind. <laughs> you can tell that uh, it's a lot worse than it is downtown Denver. There is a lot of wind and some drifting. I'm going to flip the camera around here. We've actually been seeing snow plows all along Pena. I brought this to the attention of the chief of police and the president of the downtown Denver partnership. Both of them telling me they've seen the video and they're working to address it in specific ways. It was one week ago today at this very time, 530 in the afternoon. The man you first see getting beat up in that video was attacked on his way leaving work. The family had planned to throw a graduation party at their home this weekend. But after this, even the graduation itself seemed in jeopardy. It doesn't take long for fire to do its worst. I heard this huge noise in like upstairs. So I went up there and I just saw that the whole ceiling was black. That ceiling was for a bedroom, Mariah Gonzalez's bedroom, a place she's never taken for granted. I've moved four times this year. <laughs> Like, I come from a homeless youth. Everything in that room was a gift. It was a gift, and it makes me really sad knowing that that's gone. Mariah did manage to save some things to help her celebrate this weekend, but she said she lost the most important thing. I had my graduation cap and gown laying on my bed right there, and all my books, all, like, stuff for college, like, a lot of stuff for school. It was like a milestone for me to have something to symbolize me actually moving forward. What am I gonna do? Like, how am I supposed to walk? It touched my heart. It didn't take long for Adams County Deputy Sheriff Julie Cedillo to realize what happened. So as firefighters worked, she picked up the phone. When I talked to my contact at the school, I told them if they can't make it happen, I can make it happen by even paying for her cap and gown. The money wasn't necessary. They have another cap and gown for me. They have a cap. The only thing that they don't have is a tassel, but that's fine. You could call it a random act of kindness, but you'd be wrong. I was a child once and I was there. I moved all over the place, so I kind of felt her pain. Sometimes it doesn't take long for people to do their best. I know that people care about me and I know that that's all that matters and that I'm okay. And that's, that's what's most important. If I could come on Saturday, I would, but I work. Maybe they'll let me stop in though. I think they should let her stop into that graduation. Now, Mariah says her mother's employer, Sprouts, has already offered to donate food for her graduation party. But as you can imagine, they still have a lot more to figure out. For more information on how to help, check out this story on KDVR.com. Kendra all Fox 31 Denver. The owner says that he'll still be able to keep his doors open here because they can grow the marijuana elsewhere. But he's planning to take this to court because he says it's a bigger battle than against the neighbors themselves. The grow operation above the Starbuds marijuana dispensary is likely to get one of two responses from neighbors. It improves the smell of the neighborhood. Honestly, my house smells like a skunk half the time. No, I'd rather smell that than have the arena on one side, oil factory on the other. Converse City, you know. I try to sit out my back porch at night and it's just so bad I just don't even want to be.
in my backyard even. Kenneth Miller is happy to hear he can soon reclaim his backyard. You know, yesterday this area was full of plants. You see Starbuds is cleaning house. Today you can see it's been empty. Owner Brian Rudin has 30 days to harvest his marijuana before it all has to go. These will be destroyed as well. It's the first time the city has denied the renewal for a marijuana cultivation license. Neighbors used a city regulation allowing them to voice opposition to licenses in industrial mixed use areas. The neighborhood has concerns and that's 100% valid. But Rudin says he doesn't believe the citizens were the driving force. He thinks two neighborhood projects were. I-70 and National Western expansion. Those are over billion dollar projects. The city really wants the space and, and they're doing what they can to run me out. This ruling doesn't go that far. The Starbucks dispensary downstairs can remain open and Brian says the company grows much more marijuana elsewhere to supply it. My fear is what will come next? So once this grow operation is shut down, will my store become a target? Some neighbors say that's a question for another day. We need to take control of our own neighborhoods, you know, I mean, we got kids and everything, you know, and I just think uh, it's a good thing if they move that out. Now, once again, the owner says he plans to move forward with a lawsuit against the city, saying that he wants to keep the location open, but that this is also a battle that the entire marijuana industry will be watching. Reporting live, Kent Erdahl, Fox 31, Denver. Yeah. Long before she could see it. You can pretty well tell the path. Sarah Bevan knew the tornado was unavoidable. We actually went down in the basement, so and into the back room because it was in, you know, it was a sound like you've never heard before. It was a sound that included heavy metal twisting off her roof and percussion as golf ball sized hail pounded her home and smashed out her windows. And we did have that moment of silence where you're kind of waiting for the next phase to hit. And when it did, well, they're pretty well toasted. It came with a bang. We had parked the vehicles in the barn so they wouldn't have hail damage. <laughs> and then the barn came down on the vehicles. A few miles south, the vehicles were the shelter. And many of these campers were also in the path. Slept in it two times and now it's laying on its roof. So pretty disappointing. Yet somehow all of those who were hit hardest, including those that wound up in the reservoir, were unoccupied. Had this been Memorial Day weekend, um, I'm, I'm concerned that we would have had some serious injuries and maybe some fatalities. Call it a path with a silver lining. Despite the Mother's Day mess, it leaves behind. I guess if I have to have it one way or the other, I'm glad I have a house, you know, rather than the barn. I called and Kent came to the rescue. We're going to tell you how we came to the rescue and exactly why these bears are so important coming up tonight at 9. But for now, Mary, I'm glad we could help. Thank you so much.